Right, I've run the oven a couple of times. I have put a door on it. Um, the door actually showed me something I wasn't expecting. Um, when you shut the door, the fire calms right down, um, which indicates to me that the exhaust isn't big enough. So I've been thinking the last couple of days how I'm going to take that pipe off and put a bigger one on. But the only other problem that we're having is the the stone base, the clay brick base, is not getting hot enough. Um, the thermometer, that thing, not 100% reliable, but it's reading about 320 degrees, which is not enough. It needs to get close to 400. So I have got some ceramic fibre insulation board, which is 10 mil thick. I ordered it off the internet. It's a big sheet. I need to cut it down. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the ceramic fibre board underneath the bricks so the bricks are raised up off the off the metal because measuring with the infrared thermometer under here the actual underside of the oven is getting to 200 degrees so the bricks aren't providing much insulation properties at all they're soaking the heat up and then transferring it through and it's being dissipated so the insulation I mean it's only you know 50 or 60 degrees off being the right kind of temperature so hopefully the insulation which is designed for kilns like glass kilns um, that's okay up to 1200 C so that insulation should help it to get there so I'm gonna go and find that it's in the back of the car take all the bricks out clean all the dust out and uh, cut it out and put it in when I first opened this box I thought oh they've sent me three sheets and not one turns out it's only the sheet in the middle that's actually the insulation um, it's quite soft um, I'm gonna put some gloves on because it's you know a fibrous mat and when I cut this I should wear a breathing you know, uh, respirator. So I'm going to get the sheet out and just see how it behaves and what it looks like and how easy it's going to be to cut. But I'm going to put some gloves on first. Right, there it is. It's pretty soft. It's very light. It's quite powdery. Um, obviously the bricks will be on top of this, but I'm going to have to pay, you know, I always have to be careful that None of the, you know, that the fibres are kind of kept away from the food. Obviously, once it's running, there'll be an airflow through, and the bricks will be on top. But I have a feeling that once the bricks are on this, they kind of need to stay on it because moving the bricks around on top of this, I think it's going to wear it down and release all sorts of fibres. So probably not. And if I was going to build this oven again, I'd probably build this into the base rather than haphazardly put it under the bricks. But um, yeah, I will try and cut it out and see how it looks. Right, I've laid the bricks out on top of the board, so I think the best thing is just to use Mr. Cutting Knife to have a little test. Yeah, I think that's going to be the best plan of action. It's just cut, follow the bricks. Let's have a go. Right, that's it. Um, it turned out to not be that hard to cut with a with the knife, and barely any dust or fibres came out. And what did I sucked up with the Hoover? So I've just checked with an off cut because this little lip here is 13 millimeters. So there is still a lip for the stones to, to lock in with, but I have a feeling the stones might jump out. But we'll see. So let's get it in and see how it looks. Right, um, the insulation board is in there. The bricks, it's actually very grippy. The bricks, um, when I was sliding the bricks in, I could feel that the, grip, the bricks were gripping quite nicely to the board. The only problem is now, this gap is no longer controlled by the stuff I jammed in the side. And it's more important now, obviously, because if the, uh, the bricks slide apart, it's gonna expose the fiber board, and I don't want the fiber board to get anywhere near the food. So um, I'm gonna need to find something to jam in that gap. But once I've jammed something in there, that should help it. So we'll fire it up a bit later. I've got some dough, which I made at home, there it is. So for the moment, I'm just gonna find something to jam in that gap. And we'll try it out a bit later and, uh, and see how it goes. Right, fire's running, it's smoky. So I've got this air extractor thing blowing out. Uh, it does appear to be getting hotter. It's hotter than it was, and interestingly, if you point the thermometer under here, it's only 140 degrees. That was getting to 200 plus before, so the insulation is definitely doing something. So, we've managed to stretch out a base. 
and we will see how it looks in a minute. Right, ready? Right, the crust is starting to glow, which is a good sign. So I thought this was going well, but look at that, that's burnt underneath. So even though my infrared thermometer told me that it was 350 degrees, it's clearly a lot hotter than that. Um, I mean, for it to burn that quickly, maybe 500, I don't know. So I've decided I don't trust those IR thermometers anymore. On the day of this video, I didn't get any other video of the pizza or the cooking, but what I have got now is a uh, thermocouple which is like a, a temperature analog temperature sensor, which I'm going to embed into the stones so I can digitally read how t hot the stones are. Um, because people say, oh, it's got to be 400 degrees, but I don't know what it is. I, I have no idea what temperature it is. So anyway, we will go and do that. Install the thermocouple now. Right, I'm back at the unit, and this is the thermocouple. Uh, it's a K-type, rated to... Uh, 750 degrees C. Uh, it's quite expensive. It came from a industrial supplies, like control supplies place. It's not an Amazon one. I couldn't find it on Amazon that I trusted. So this little bullet thing is going to be in between the four bricks in the middle. So because these bricks are twice as high as they are wide, when you put a grid of four by two, you get a perfect square. Uh, the intersection between these four bricks, that is the dead centre of the oven. Um, and because this oven is only made to do one pizza at a time, the, uh, the pizza is usually over that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark, before I take the bricks out, I'm going to mark where the centre is and then I've got to drill a hole. So obviously the drill, uh, I mean that's a bigger bit than I'll use, but that won't go in there. So what I'm going to have to do is drill it from the bottom, um, but that's going to be interesting. So the first thing I'm going to do is mark the hole on the inside, take all the bricks out, take the insulation out and we'll go from there. Right, so what I've got here is a 1.6mm uh, TIG electrode uh, which is made of tungsten. I've um, ground a point on the end and this one's a zirconiated or uh, so the one. This is an aluminium one anyway. So, oh, hold on, I'm going to pull my sleeves up, otherwise it will sit on the top of the oven and get everywhere. So all I've got to do Let's find the centre of the oven between the four bricks, push this down, and because this is made of tungsten, this is really freaking hard. So that's in there, and that will have gone through the insulation and made a little hole. So now I can remove the bricks, and that will leave me with a little tungsten flag in the insulation of where the hole needs to be. Right, so take the tungsten out, so that goes quite easily through the insulation, give it a couple of, a couple of pumps, so that spike will have left a, a divot on the, on the inside of the steel now, so all we have to do is lift this insulation out find that little divot and that will mark the exact point where we need to make the hole. Right, there it is. X marks the spot and all that. So I've used a sharpie just to make it a bit easier to find. So obviously the problem we've got here is we can't get a drill in there. So the only thing I can do is use the plasma cutter and line up and just let it, let it cut through. And it will make a little pinhole to come out the other side and then I'll be able to use the drill to, to find the pinhole and drill it through properly. So it's not going to be very good for the tip. In fact, this is a really nice tip. That one's not been ruined yet. I might swap that for a knackered one because this is going to mess the tip up. So I'll get set up for that and we'll cut the hole through and we'll see if it uh, comes out the other side neatly and then I can drill it through. Oh, 
that was quick. So now what we need to do is drill, uh, drill through from the bottom. That should be it. Thread the cable through and get it all fitted in. Right, I've made a hole. <laughs> it's not very big because it turned out that that angle with a very big drill bit is quite scary. So I ended up going through with a brand new like 5.2, it's a M6 tapping drill. So that managed to get through in seconds, so now we've got a nice little hole. So all we have to do is see, yeah that cable should go through, I mean, it might not. But There we go. Right, there it is. So that little pin sticking up is the head of the thermocouple. And there is the cable coming out the bottom. So all I've got to do now is the insulation is make a hole in that that's big enough for the head of that thermocouple to poke up through. And then I need to grind the corners off some of the bricks so the thermocouple is trapped in the corners. So I'll get the insulation in and uh, there we go. It's a nice hole in the middle, put a couple of bricks in. The head of the um, thermocouple is about as big as this bolt so I'm going to use that initially so I'm going to lay the four middle bricks and it doesn't matter which brick goes where but it will do after this but it doesn't matter at the moment so I'll pick four bricks which are going to be the middle so what I need to do is grind off a little bit off the corner of each one so that the thermocouple can sit in the middle and the best way to do that is probably, I think, going to be a flat, a sanding flat disc. I don't think a diamond disc is really going to be the right thing for the job. So I've got some new ones of those that I got especially. So we'll grind a little bit off each corner, and hopefully we'll be able to make a little, uh, little tunnel for the for the thermometer to sit in. Right there we go. So all I've got to do is put the bricks in in that order. See how the cable's coming up. No, can't really. And that little stainless bullet will sit right in the brick floor and give me a real temp measurement, which is just what we need. Right, I'm looking forward to this. Look how well that little bullet is sitting in there. So all we've got to do is take the last brick, and slot it in. There you go. Look at that. Is there a better way of measuring the temperature of the stones? It's certainly better than a stupid infrared gun. So a quick little test before I go home for the day. This is the uh, hall blower thing. Um, it's a force drive controller I built for a UDS. Um, all I've done is unwire the probe that I use for the barbecue and I've wired in the probe from the pizza oven and you see it's reading 7 degrees C. Just notice that's saying 256 which is the temperature in F but this is now set to C so it's, it keeps the same number it doesn't do a conversion. Interesting. So that's saying 7.1 degrees. I'm just going to warm it up a bit. Oh there it goes. Now this um, thermocouple is designed for 750 degrees C. See how quickly it cools down. Although there's not much heat in the bricks at this moment. All of that heat will have gone into the sensor directly. Um, but this, this thermocouple is alright for 750 C. Um, and this thing will do 1260 C on a K-type. So I'm going to use that initially and then once I know it works I'll get a little dedicated little box. And, Maybe I'll put an air, an air sensor thermocouple in as well, just up in the top, just so I've got both numbers. Anyway, pleased with that. So I'm going to go home and I'll make some dough up. I ordered some special Italian dough off the internet. Um, so we'll have another go this week and hopefully we'll get that. I've got a new peel as well. So it's lots of new things this week. Hopefully we'll nail it this week. We'll get the oven running at the right temperature, get the dough right. Everything will be good.